Hello everyone. I thought I would show you my progress on this affixed vert clothing system. So this is just a body. I hit random a couple of times until I got a heavyweight character. I've cut the body into pieces, although you probably can't tell because the, the seams are not very obvious and they go away entirely once you hit play. But I've also got some placeholder clothes. These are untextured, but I figured I'd show them to you. This shirt has a torso mesh inside of it, as you can see. That's because we're going to be replacing this torso mesh with this torso mesh. The only real difference is that the one that's attached to the shirt doesn't have most of the verts. Uh, that prevents pop-through, so I don't have to worry about that. It also reduces the load slightly. The pants are the same way. Um, the, there is a pants mesh attached to these pants, which will replace this legs mesh. Uh, sorry, the legs mesh will replace this legs mesh, uh, and it's just a strip along the waistline. So we're going to be getting rid of a lot of these default meshes when we hit play. But we're going to be keeping the basic shape of this character. There we go. So we've got the same basic shape as before, but now it's covered in clothes. And the clothes were much too small for that character as the default, so the affixed vert system works. Now it doesn't work perfectly yet. Uh, I've got some issues where the fabric of the cloth, uh, on the shirt at least, looks wrinkled. Not sure exactly what I'm going to do about that. Um, you can tell that the uh, mesh has been replaced because this mesh is damaged on purpose so that you can see the gaps there. But since I've replaced the mesh, I don't have to worry about pop through anymore, which means that, you know, I can do whatever I want and there will be no pop through. Now, the poor uh, rigging of the shirt is another question entirely, but you don't have to worry about that. It's just uh, it's something that I'm just uh, haven't gotten around to really creating a good model for. The pants are the same way. Uh, as I move them, you can see there's no pop through because there's no leg inside of them anymore. But there is pop through right here along the waistline. This is a very common problem. Everyone runs into this when they try and create a game where you can choose a top and a bottom separately and just combine whatever tops and bottoms you'd like. Most people solve this by having a only one waistline. So if you put on a pair of pants, all your pants are going to have the same waistline. So you don't need to create variants for your shirts because everything has the same waistline. But that doesn't work for me because I'm in a fantasy setting here. And that means that I've got things like armor, um, and I've got things like, uh, uh, you know, ill-fitting peasant clothing versus some fancy tailored king's pants sort of thing. Uh, and fashion, while not a major focus in the game, should allow for different waistlines. So it's a big concern to me to allow for multiple waistlines. But if I was going to do this the old-fashioned way, that would mean that I would have to build a variant for every single shirt for every single waistline. That wouldn't work very well. That's a lot of content to create, and moreover, that content is not something I can rely on modders to create. So what I needed to do is create a method where the shirt will automatically tuck itself into the pants regardless of what the pants waistline is. And I came up with one. I haven't implemented it yet though, so I'm going to show it to you in logical sense, just so you can see what I'm planning, and, uh, and I'll be implementing it over the course of this week. So, what I've got here is the Blender file for this pair of pants. And this pair of pants has a shape key called Tuck. And Tuck just tucks the pants in underneath the skin. Now, this shape key is something you will never see in the game, because there is no uh, reason for this to ever be a valid pair of pants. Instead, this shape key is applied logically to the um, to the clothing to the shirt as it's calculated. If I were to go back into this, what happens is I have this little white homunculus down here. This is what I actually use to do all of my calculations. So I basically take a before and after picture of this mesh, and this is the after picture, and this is the before picture. By applying the pants shape keys. I can change whether I get, uh, you know, whether I have indents on this mesh. So if I take that tuck shape key and I apply it after on to, to the larger mesh uh, of the final character, then that means that this shape, that this mesh here will, the, will have an indent. And that means the shirt will look at it and it will say, okay, well, I need to expand at the shoulders and I need to expand at the elbows and I need to expand at the thighs and all that stuff. But I've got this area below the belt here where I'm actually supposed to be tucked in. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck in there. 
conversely, if I apply the shape key to the to the early part, so that I have this mesh here being tucked in, and then the full sized mesh of the heavier character not having that tuck in, then the clothing model will think, oh well, I have to actually push out further than I thought here. Um, and that means that what I get is, depending on whether I apply that shape key to the before or after homunculus, uh, I get either tucked in or tucked out just as easily. So that should work with any pair of pants, as long as that pair of pants has this tuck shape key. Now the reason I haven't implemented it just yet is because I actually have to come up with a way to apply this shape key in such a manner, um, and that's not entirely straightforward, uh, and it probably involves a double mesh um, linking system, but that's okay. It's not difficult, it's just annoying. Uh, so that will have to happen over the course of this week. And I just wanted everyone to see where I was standing with this and uh, the, uh, uh, the direction I was trying to take it.